In this video we're going to cover how to take our high poly model and our low poly model and create the normal maps and the ambient occlusion maps uh, using turtle rendering uh, in Maya 2018. So this one's a colored version but essentially we're going to be taking these high poly and they're going to be sitting on top of each other and we're going to copy this detail onto the low poly. As you can see these are both the exact same low poly but here's the difference where you have the um, the copied high poly, you can see that there's a lot more detail compared to the original base shape. So even though they are the exact same, you're getting all this sculptural detail that looks uh, really detailed and interesting on a simple geometric shape like this. So that's what the baking process will be doing. So let's jump over back to here. And in the last video we covered the unwrapping, so in this case we're going to now move on to the baking section. I slightly modified the UVs just to make sure they were taking up more space when so I kind of rearranged a couple things. Um, but aside from that it's the exact same as the last uh, time we worked on this. So let's close out this. And so the first thing we want to do is go through some uh, settings I guess. Uh, make sure the low res is sitting on top of the high res. So you or high poly, so you have both of these lined up exactly on top of each other. Uh, so once that's the case, we can turn that back off. Uh, now we want to go through and render out the maps. So I'm going to turn off high poly for now. If I press the render button, which is uh, render settings right here, it's the one with the little gear on there. Uh, by default, we're, we don't have, uh, we do have turtle in this case, so I guess it's already on. Um, but if you don't have turtle sitting right here, uh, you just have to turn that on in the settings. Um, without turtle set on, all you're going to get is a rendered image of your character. And so we don't want the rendered image, we want the texture maps rendered. So let's close out that. And in order to turn the turtle on, go to Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager. And once you click on that, scroll down to the bottom where you see turtle. And just click Loaded and Auto Load and I have auto load on so it's already turned on. But if you don't have that, there's turtle right there, just turn that on. Alright, and then press close when you're done. So once that's on, you should be able to switch this down to the turtle renderer. By switching it, you should see this now saying turtle down here, so let's click on turtle. And once you're in here, uh, the first thing you see is sampling. This is how much quality you're going to get, the crispness of your textures. You can uh, the higher the number you slide this, the better the quality, but the longer the render time. The lower the number on this one, the better the quality, longer the render time. And you can switch out to like different ones like Box is a pretty good one to use also. But that's if you want to get higher quality settings. Um, we're going to be moving over to the Baking tab primarily. And we want to set this from Rendering Type to Baking. So I'm going to click on the Baking settings. So now we're going to be Baking and under the Baking tab we can set all of our settings. So I'm going to select both of these and Actually, I'm going to take out this guy, um, just move him off to the side. Uh, since I'm not really baking him with anything, I don't have a high poly of him, I can um, set him off to the side. I could bake the shadows that he's creating onto here, but um, I'm just going to put him over there. Uh, essentially, what we're going to be doing right now is creating the normal maps. So select both of these and add selected, and that'll put these in here. I'm going to rename this guy to be a little more of a cleaner name. So let's try static mesh pillar. Cool. And lowercase that i. Cool, alright. So I've got the bust and I've got the pillar. I could combine these together into one object, but I want to make um, them interactable in Unity. So if your character bumps into it, you can knock the head off of the base. So I'm going to leave them separate. But if you wanted to combine them, you can combine them. When you have these... Uh, there we go, refresh theme. Uh, when you have these in here, uh, if you have multiple, you'll have multiple in here. Uh, let's turn off the low poly now, turn off that guy and turn on this guy. So we want to add both these in here, but these get assigned specifically to each one. So this is the bust, so I'm going to use the bust and add selected to the source. So the target is what the low poly is, we're going to be baking onto the target. The source is where it's coming from, this is the high poly. So I'm going to add select it so I have the high poly or high resolution on to the bust and I switch out to the pillar and I'm going to say you are the high poly going on to the low poly pillar. So when you switch back and forth you'll see there's two different ones here. So I'm going to bake both of these. Uh, then switch down to let's, uh, we don't need envelope if you want to get a little more advanced you can determine how much of an envelope you wanted. Uh, essentially what envelope is referring to is, let's scale this out, if the um, 
this is your envelope it's encompassing your object uh, you see you can make an envelope to say what you're copying uh, we can skip that uh, transfer settings uh, we want to switch inwards to closest uh, inwards again applies to this so if your outside cage envelope is larger than your high poly then you would set it to inwards but since it's overlapping exactly where it is there's inside and outside we're going to use closest to get our uh, approximation uh, world space meaning they're lined up in the exact same grid coordinates so we're going to use world um, and the rest of these should be fine so I'll minimize that uh, let's go to the common settings we don't really need to play with this one so those settings should be fine and then texture baking settings so I'm going to start with a low texture map um, you can start with a higher one but the, uh, the lower ones bake faster so I'm going to leave a a low texture map and if it works well and correct then I'll bump it up to the higher one so I'm going to conserve that one I'm going to click on merge to one map if you have multiple different ones then you're going to get a texture map just for this guy and one for this guy and only one of them will save so I'm going to say merge to one map if you only have one model then you don't need to check this but since I have two different models I'm going to need to merge both models into the same map hence merge to one map um, this is where it's going to save at. I'm going to relocate this to my current folder and leave it here. I'm going to call this, uh, actually don't call it anything, you just press open. This is just setting your destination of where it's going to go. Here's where you actually name it. I'm not sure why it picks that name, but uh, we're going to name this, um, I guess, Texture Pillar NRM, so normal. Uh, and over here, Targa, TGA, that's uh, the default one. Targa works great. Uh, you can use TIFF if you wanted, uh, Bitmap, PNG, all those work just fine inside of uh, the game engine Unity. Uh, I'm starting to preference more on the PNG side uh, because PNG, well, all of them carry your transparency. They all carry lossless com quality so you won't get blurry pixels like a JPEG will compress your quality. Uh, so this will give you the original uncompressed quality. Plus, PNGs allow you to see a thumbnail of your image, whereas the uh, targets, you just see TGA, you have to open it in Photoshop to actually see what it looks like. Uh, but PNGs, I can open in uh, just normal photo stuff. Um, cool, so I, that all should be set. And, oh, make sure you put the pre-suffix at the end. PNGs, whatever you pick. If you do target, you do TGA. If you do bitmap, do BMP. Uh, if you don't, then you're going to get a file that doesn't have a name tag, uh, in which case it won't know what it is, uh, so you'll have to rename it by adding that on there in the finished file if it lands in your folder and you, you just have to put that .png in the end. Um, but I'm putting it here for now. Uh, let's go down to full shading. I don't need full shading. That full shading is just going to give me what I see right here. I don't need that. I want the normal map, so that should be it. So everything should be set. I have the target and the source files. I've got the designated height or the size of the map. I'm merging them into one map and destination, name, PNG, normal map. So now I go to the render button and I click on this. Make sure both are turned on or else you won't see your uh, baking. You have to have both sitting on top of each other and turned on. So now it's going to render out the texture map. Cool. and it looks like it finished everything seems to have worked quite well uh, so everything's good to go so I'm going to boost up the render time since everything worked and set that to let's go 2048 by 2048 press enter and render again so this will take a bit longer maybe 30 seconds uh, compared to the original five seconds uh, so it's giving you a larger texture map. The larger texture map means more pixels. More pixels means better clarity and quality. So you can compress this down inside the game engine, but it's better to start higher than it is to start lower because you can't raise the quality too much. It looks like it finished, so we're good to go. That should have auto-saved right to here. So I have the uh, texture pillar normal uh, PNG. If I click on this, you can see it opens in the photo viewer, and it's fine. The Targo wouldn't have opened. You'd have to pull through Photoshop, and so kind of like in the PNGs. Uh, anyway, so that's our normal map. We're done with that one. Uh, if you wanted to make corrections, if you wanted to, let's click actual size. If you want to get a little more clear, you can play with the settings, but by default, everything seems to be uh, looking pretty well. 
and cool we're good to go all right next one let's switch out to i'm going to drop this back to 512 we're baking out the ao or ambient inclusion all the other other settings should be fine i'm going to rename this one to ao because i'm changing the maps now same location everything's fine but i don't want normal this time i want a custom shader and under custom i'm going to click on the texture map right here and i'm going to assign the custom shader so i'm going to click on the word maya with the name and i should see ILR OCC sampler, that's the occlusion. So ambient occlusion, we're gonna click on occlusion right here. And that will assign the occlusion uh, rendering material to our object. So everything should be good to go now with the new name, smaller size, and occlusion set in place. What essentially occlusion is, um, let's close out that. Occlusion is, turn off the high poly, um, is this shadowing. If I click here, this is the viewport setting for it. As you can see, the shadows are added to here. And if I turn that off, shadows back off. If I switch out to, let's say, this guy, get my shadows back on. So I'm getting baked in shadows, which makes it look a little more realistic. So I turn that back off. Another setting you can click on is um, anti-aliasing. It makes everything look a bit more sharper and cleaner. So I'm going to leave the uh, anti-aliasing on. It's a viewport setting. Won't affect your game engine. And I like to leave this one on, but um, I'm going to leave it off for now, for baking purposes, so we can see what we're getting. All right, so both of these turned on, and let's press render again. So this should render out a small version of our ambient occlusion. Okay, nope, oh, still working. Uh, it also tells you down here in the bottom left corner what your percentage status is on finishing that. All right, cool. So that one took about 10 seconds, which means the higher quality is going to take longer. Um, Everything seems to have worked fine. If you want to change the settings uh, to adjust them, just go over to your hypershade right here, and you should see a new material created from the occlusion uh, material we clicked on. So there's our ILR occlusion sampler. If I click on this, or say double click on that, here's all of the settings. So you can change the um, minimax color, the uh, what the environment color is around it, the sample, the sizes, the max distance zero is by default. It'll figure out where the average shadows are, but you can set, I want you to calculate shadows from one unit apart to like 10 units apart, contrast and scale. So you can play with all that, but I think this turned out decent enough for what we're doing. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, so let's set this up to a higher status. Let's go 2048 by 2048. And let's render again. Oh, everything should be set and let's press render so this will probably take a little bit longer maybe a minute because it's a higher size map which again gives me a better pixel quality on our final texture map and again down here I probably should have closed out the hypershade I can almost barely read the numbers on there so once this finishes you would just bring this into Photoshop and you know exactly where to color because you have the face right here and the rocks right here so you can specifically say I want let's say white hair or black hair uh, and then I want let's say skin color right here and different eye colors since so you just paint uh, a different layer in Photoshop and multiply our colors down on top of that uh, which I'll cover in the next video on texturing uh, but so far everything looks good if I click the one-to-one -one right here to give me actual size to pan around hold the alt key and you can use the middle mouse button push down and you can start panning around and you can see what it looks like Everything seems to have baked out quite well, so we're good to go. And it should have automatically saved because we set the location, so I now have the pillar ambient occlusion map. And right here, if I actual size that, I can see everything looks like it turned out pretty well. There might be a little glitching errors occasionally, like some of these white spots probably shouldn't be there, like that one right there. Uh, some of these, you can paint these out in Photoshop. Sometimes your baking doesn't always work 100%. Maybe some of these shadows are a little too dark. You can either play with the settings or adjust them manually in Photoshop if you're looking for uh, super high quality clarity. But let's close out that. And let's assign our material. So let's uh, leave that open for the moment. I'm going to create a new material. Uh, usually Blin works pretty well. If you do a Lambert, you're going to get a flat color and you don't see the uh, light shining on the neural map as well. So Blin makes it easier to see if your object turned out as well as you're hoping for. Uh, in the end, it doesn't matter whether you pick Lambert, Blin, Fong, whatever. Uh, Unity, you'll adjust your 
settings inside Unity. So the materials you pick here doesn't matter, it's just for what we see in Maya. So I'm going to double click on the blend and I'm going to rename this texture uh, pillar. And I don't need to put AO or normal because this is our material and not the actual maps. So for the, let's go with the, I'll go with normal map first. Uh, let's close out, so I'll smooth that over there. Switch out to here, and turn off the high poly. So I just see the low poly now. Turn this back on. So I'm going to toss on, you can use the middle mouse and drag this onto here. And I can close out this guy, I'm done with the render settings. Middle mouse, drag onto here. And I now have a nice shiny object, but it's still missing our final uh, details. So let's go to that material, the blend, and let's put on the bump mapping. So under bump mapping, click on the settings. Under file, uh, we're going to set bump to tangent space. Maya runs on tangent space, so we need to set that setting right there. And then over here where it's asking you what the map is, click on that little box, and then assign the map, which is under my desktop. This is the normal map, so I'm going to select on that one, and boom, it should be on there. If you don't see it, it's because your textures aren't turned on, which is this little texture button, or it's also 6 on the keyboard, so I press 6, it'll pop into material mode. What you see here now uh, is the normal map, you can see a lot of the detail, but there's this really sharp darkness on here. Uh, it's kind of like, and you can see like this broken line right here, uh, where the texture seam was. Uh, for some reason, Maya doesn't render the normal too well under this normal sRGB setting. So if you switch back out to raw and click on that one, then your normal gets cleared up. I'm not sure why it doesn't work under that one, but uh, switching that out works great. And this won't affect Unity. The map, when it goes in Unity, will be just fine, uh, or Unreal Engine or whichever you're using. But raw uh, helps it work better in Maya. So that's under your texture. If I jump backwards, oops, wrong way. OK, doesn't matter. Uh, so texture pillar. So that was the bump mapping we signed here, which was our uh, same settings right here, backwards correct direction, back to there. All right, cool. So before and after, if I, I can probably close this out now, close that. Uh, if I look at this and I press four on the keyboard, which is regular shading, oops, that's wireframe, regular shading is five, uh, six is uh, textured. So before and after, you can see what happens with the normal map. We're getting pretty close to that high poly model. Everything's super detailed, super crisp and amazing. I can see all the different uh, bump surfaces on here, but in actuality what the normal map is doing is creating the illusion that there's bumps. There aren't actually any bumps on the surface. Oops, wrong button. Uh, it's a smooth polygon surface. It's the neural map that's creating all the detail. So that's pretty neat. Uh, so now let's add the last one. So click back on our object to, to get back to our material or go through Hypershade to grab it. Um, let's add our color. You can also toss it on the diffuse if you want. Um, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put it on the color channel. Uh, if you're using color, put it on the color channel per se. Uh, let's click on file and assign which file I want. Let's switch on the ambient occlusion and this will add a lot of shadows to our characters. So if I press open, you should see uh, a very pretty looking guy. He's actually quite messed up. By default, uh, somehow transparency turns on in Maya, so if I jump back a setting, uh, transparency is on. So if I right click on transparency, I can break connection. So right click on the word transparency, not the actual, any of these things. So once you break off the transparency, then you're good to go. Now he looks fine. So the shadows are currently in here and they're enhancing his detail. Uh, before and after, if I break off the color, you can see that it looked like this. And with the shadows back on, you can see that it adds more detail. So, uh, it's just enhancing what we have. If I turned off the bump mapping, break connection, you can see with these shadows, he looks like this, and turning off that, it uh, looks like this. So adding the shadows definitely helps, and adding the normal map definitely helps a lot too. So a combination of these. Uh, and now I can put this guy back into place. So let's uh, go back to here. Control A is a shortcut to hide your attribute editor. Uh, zero that back out, and this goes back into place. Everything's good to go. Uh, this will need the same material, so I'm going to toss on the same material. So middle mouse, drag it onto here. And it's black by default because our texture is currently uh, not existent right here, so it's going to come out black. So when I color this in Photoshop, my um, material will get assigned correctly. 
Uh, so that pretty much covers the uh, baking process. And so at this point, we just have to export. So I can select everything. Uh, I should probably combine these two first because I won't want this permanently attached. Uh, so we'll go mesh combine. And let's wipe out the history. Uh, shortcut right there. Otherwise, it's under edit, delete by type, history. And then I can rename this back to regular pillar. Uh, so now they're combined and connected. I'm going to select both of these, uh, which should be named correctly. Um, this one and this one. Cool. Select these and file, export selection. And I'm going to call this the static mesh pillar. And FBX into here. So static mesh pillar, export. Cool. So we're good to go. Everything's ready to go into Maya. It's, I mean, Unity. So I'm going to color this in the next video. And uh, that should be it for this guy. Uh, also, of note, if you're playing with the settings, uh, let's say you're um, baking. What I like to do is make a copy. So I do a control D for duplicate, move him over here, and then take this guy and set his settings. Oops. Uh, Hypershade back to Lambert 1, assign initial shading group, boom. Uh, this way I can keep baking so I have my high poly, I have my low poly, and every time I rebake a new one, I'll see a copy. This way I can see what the changes are occurring and I don't mess up the original guy. So usually I wouldn't combine this little vine to the original that I'm baking from, I'd combine it to this guy right here. So this would be my final one that I'd export. Uh, but everything else should be fine. Um, oh, I also forgot to recenter the pivot point. So that's insert. And then let's go with the, uh, hmm. Actually, I should probably uncheck insert. Let's move this guy out of the way. Put this guy back to zero. Cool. And then on this one, uh, insert, use the X snap and middle click here so that it goes right to the grid center. And then I can press insert to turn that off. So now I've got a correct um, object snap orientation and this guy right here both lined up in the same location so we're good to go file export selection again and that should correct for that cool and so now that everything's good to go I'll slide this back over and reset him back to zero okay and that should cover the baking process